Hi, Zulily fans. You are live with Savannah. Thanks for tuning in today. We have a very special Facebook Live for you. Um, Zulily is all about finding and delivering value, and we found such amazing value a few weeks ago. We brought it back. Today on the site, we are featuring a Cajun Life, um, up basically starting at $8.99. So a lot of Zulily exclusive bundles and to help walk through the product and how you can easily incorporate it into Thanksgiving or Christmas, we've invited Master Chef Will. Thanks for being here. He's already put to work. <laughs> So Will, why don't you tell us what you're doing and also kind of how you got involved with a Cajun Life? Well, right now what we're making is a uh, dirty rice Cajun, you know, southern dish. It's our version of stuffing for the most part. Oh, fun. Uh, you know, I grew up all over the world. My parents were military, but we have roots that are down in, uh, you know, from Lafayette to New Orleans all the way through, you know, the south. And with that, I kind of picked up on a lot of our traditions and cultures. Plus, I got away from eating the usual, you know, turkey, bread, and, you know, the bread stuffing. The, what uh, the rest of us eat yeah, for Thanksgiving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what everybody tends to eat, you know. So I, I switched up every year. You know, uh, for Christmas, we do a seafood boil every single year. It's a different one. For Thanksgiving, you know, whether it's a Cajun smoked uh, chicken, mm -hmm. um, Cajun smoked turkey, a deep fried Cajun turkey, but we always have a different variation of dirty rice to go with it as well. So cool. So today, in all of these recipes, we're actually highlighting and featuring a Cajun life. So make sure to click on the link in this post. This is actually a Facebook Live exclusive event, and we are going to be selling these quickly because we have a limited supply. So make sure to start shopping. And if for whatever reason your favorite sells out, make sure to heart the brand because when it comes back, we will notify you right away. All right, so, God, this smells so good in here. <laughs> um, and full disclosure, Zulily fans, I am not a chef, so I'm leaving most of the heavy lifting to Will. Uh, but he did tell me he's going to make me do a little bit of yeah. stuff later. Yeah, so. this, is, this is an interactive uh, event here today, so <laughs> I'm going to make sure that Savannah is on top of it 100%. You know, she's not just going to, you know, become a novice. She's going to become a, an expert <laughs> Chef, by the time we're done with this I, uh, special I, today. I get in the kitchen one day a year, and that is Thanksgiving, and only because my family makes me get in the kitchen. <laughs> so I can do all of the traditional stuff really well, but it is kind of boring. So if I could bring this to this year's Thanksgiving, I think I'll be like the hero of the day. All right, so what are we using right now, Will? So what we started with was some basic ground uh, hamburger meat and some andouille sausage, mm -hmm. which andouille is traditional to, you know, Cajun culture. And I'm seasoning it with uh, a Cajun life blackening rub. Oh, great. So what's um, fantastic about this is it does actually show you on the side of the product all of the different proteins that it goes really well with. So if you're nervous, you're like, I don't know what I could put this in. That's kind of my thought process when I get in the kitchen. Um, it's kind of an easy for all levels of expertise, whether you are a master chef like Will or a complete novice, stay away from the kitchen person like me. <laughs> <laughs> I really do try to stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give this back to you. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, one of the best things about uh, Cajun Life products, too, is that they are low in sodium. So, you know, oh, that's if, you're, great. if you have family members that may have high cholesterol, yep. you know, diabetes, anything like that, this and is just, actually a perfect mix. Oh, and just so you can all see at home, I'm going to actually show a close-up here of how good this looks. You can't smell it, but it is smell. Oh, my gosh. It's so aromatic. Like, it smells really, really yummy. I thought that was just my cologne. But <laughs> I guess it's your food. Unless your cologne smells like sausage. <laughs> Maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So what are we? I know we're doing a couple of things today, right? Yes, we are. We're actually uh, one with the dirty rice, which I did mention. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to let this uh, simmer just a tad down, kind of render down a little bit more of the Perfect. fat before we go on to the next spot. Now we're going to come over to the uh, shrimp and remoulade sauce. Over Sorry, here guys. We're live. If you just saw a counter for there for a minute, that was all me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So remoulade sauce uh, in down in Louisiana, the south is pretty much it's a Cajun version of a tartar sauce. Regular tartar sauce, you get the more of the mayonnaise and the, the relish mm -hmm. component. With remoulade sauce, it's more uh, peppery. You got a lot of paprika, cayenne, um, the just the seasonings that go with it that actually make it stand out. Plus, the key ingredient is grain mustard. I recognize that. <laughs> Gray mustard so, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. So I was gonna say, is this super spicy? Because you're mentioning all these like spices and like peppers. Is it? I mean, I think of Cajun being spicy, but I don't think any of these products are super spicy. A lot right? of people think when when they hear the term Cajun, they think spicy. When mm -hmm. in all reality, it, it isn't. Cajun food is flavorful, and that's, that's awesome. and that's the one thing. You add spices to it, but it mm -hmm. isn't 
inherent to being spicy. So in addition to not being a cook, I also have the wimpiest taste buds in the world. So the fact that it's not spicy is great because I'm actually so excited to taste this stuff. Just, okay, I'm sitting here like my husband, thankfully I have a wonderful husband who cooks for me. I don't do any of the cooking. So Will is helping today. Yes? Oh, good question. What seasoning? It's one of these ones, right? Well, that, that one we're actually about to toss in the all-purpose rub. So. And Facebook Live secret, we have a team of people in the background. So <laughs> <laughs> one of our production um, producers just helped with that question. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so what I do with the Remy Lod while the uh, dirt rice is, you know, the meats are sitting there cooking down, I want to mix up the mustard and the uh, mayonnaise first. That way we incorporate this before adding any seasonings, any uh, right. extra and flavorings as well. Just to help get a close up, I'm also going to show our fans at home what we're doing. Just mixing, but you can see kind of the consistency that he's getting there and the color. Exactly. So we're going to let this sit for a sec before mm -hmm. we add the other uh, components in. We're going to come back over to the, the meats, which are exactly where we need them. So mm. when you're, when you're, when you're <laughs> cooking uh -oh. in general, when you're cooking in general, the key is to layer flavors. You don't want to have flavors. it to where you're just tasting one all the way throughout. You want to have it to where when you are uh, with a dish like this, you've got the blackening seasoning that goes mm -hmm. into the meat. You've also got the um, the chicken rub that we're actually going to add into the Trinity, which you know for those who don't know, it is green bell peppers. Uh, some people use red bell peppers, but I prefer the green. Green bell peppers, celery, and onions. He says this because right before we went live, I said, I don't know what a trinity is. Is that a thing? And yes, it is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you had mentioned that like every different culture has their own version of a trinity, right? Exactly. Every culture has it, whether it's a, uh, excuse me, not the right. Oh, yeah. Whether it's the, um, the Spanish version, which is a sofrito, mm -hmm. a, um, let me see, the mirepoix, which is a French, you know, version as well. Every culture has uh, their their version of a trinity that actually mixes mixes and meshes well with you know the food that they're that they're working with because whatever's indigenous is kind of yeah. what they're they're going with fun you learn new things every day right Zulily fans <laughs> or savannah does at least <laughs> <laughs> okay so now what we're, we're making is going to be a little mini roux what the roux is going to do is that it acts as a binding agent so mm -hmm. when we're making the dirty rice it's not just you know, separate between the meats and the rice, it's so going to be one. for viewers who kind of skew more to my level of <laughs> experience, what is a roux? So a roux is, is basically, it's a thickening agent, but it's in Cajun culture, it's butter and, um, and flour. In the Creole culture, mm -hmm. it's oil. Just depends on where you're at and what you're able to afford for the most part. Oh, great. So Actually, vice versa, excuse me, the oil goes in with, with that first, excuse me. Again, I, I am a novice, if you can't tell, so I am finding so much interest. And I'm going to, again, highlight what this looks like. So this is what we're getting started on. And it, does this, are you looking for like the, a specific color to know when it's done? Well, one, one, I'm melting down the butter first, and then mm -hmm. I'm gonna add the flour in. And we wanna get it to where it's, it's kinda like a little blondish, which will probably take about five, 10 minutes, if okay. that. Uh, depending on what you're making, if you're making, let's say, a gumbo, you want one that's more on the peanutty caramel color, which is a darker, it adds a little gotcha. bit more flavor. You know, profile to it. So I, I feel it. like butter is the one thing I do know from my parents. You cannot ever have too much butter. I know that's actually probably not true from a health perspective, but yeah. it smells good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it's thickening up a little bit, and you can always add in um, a little bit more butter if it gets too thick, or mm -hmm. a little bit more flour if it's too thin. But with all the other items that are going in the dish, there's really no need to add more because we're going to add in the seasoning and everything else to go with it. Gotcha. So. So just out of curiosity, this is actually a super affordable meal, right? Like none of these ingredients cost all that much. No, most of the, most of the items for dirty rice we have in our pantries to begin with, whether it's oil, whether it's uh, butter in our fridge, um, flour, onions, celery, you know, mm -hmm. the seasoning spices, you know, minus a Cajun life, but uh, salt, pepper, paprika, the yeah. basics, every person for the most part, I would assume has in their, uh, their pantry or their fridge. Yep. So it makes life a little bit easier. So as a reminder, we are going to be posting the recipes, so make sure to go download them. Hopefully you have all of the ingredients in your pantry already, but you don't have a Cajun life, so make sure to click on the link in the post, buy them up. We are doing a lot of Zulily exclusive bundles for $8.99. So the value there is pretty immense. It's a lot of great product, and we do have limited quantities, so don't forget to purchase them. As a reminder, if you haven't already, Make sure to click that little heart next to the brand on the site because if we sell out of your favorites, we will be bringing them back and we can notify you right away once they're back on the site. All right, so I'm actually going to show again what we've got going in the pan. So you just added the Trinity, right? Yes, I did. Trinity, the jalapenos, and the garlic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually 
get these where they're sweated down a little bit, and then we're mm -hmm. gonna go back over to the uh, remoulade because while this is cooking down, and once we get it off the heat, we're gonna mm -hmm. add in the uh, the chicken livers, which. You know, me as a kid, I wasn't really a fan I of them. I like chicken livers does not sound terribly appetizing to me, but I, I know my dad likes them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we add a little bit of ground pepper just to season it up. And then we added the uh, blackening spice mm -hmm. to the meat to begin with, so now we're actually going to add a little bit of the chicken spice chicken rub to go with And it. again, everything that we are cooking with today is available on the site today. So make sure to click the link in the post. If you weren't here from the beginning of the video, this is actually a Facebook Live exclusive event. And we are making it exclusive because we think it's going to sell like hotcakes <laughs> or like Cajun mix, <laughs> so pick it up. Um, a lot of great products. And what's really fun too is in addition to all of the seasonings that you're showing today, we actually also have a lot of great mixes. So the last time we did this feature, we highlighted the Hush Puppy mix, which is my kind of cooking because on the back of the product, it actually has a great helpful way to use it. So <laughs> this is me. And obviously this is like Will's type of cooking is all of the fun <laughs> stuff on the stove. But I am very much like ingredients, in the package, pop it out, done. All right. All right, now we're gonna go back over to the uh, rummy lod. We're gonna let this cook down just a tad. Perfect. Okay, let me make sure we've got that bowl over. Oh, yes. Okay, now with the rummy lod sauce, minced garlic and minced um, onions are very key in this mix just because of the fact that it adds that, that extra bite to it. You don't want a uh, rummy lod sauce that is just pretty much a cream all the way across. You want to have the, the texture because when you're doing, let's say, po' boys, mm -hmm. or in this case, we're doing the uh, uh, Cajun shrimp, you want to make sure that they're, the textures all mesh as one. So the sauce is really, I mean, today we're using it with shrimp, but really you could make the sauce for a lot of different items. Yeah, um, uh, one of them is with the packets, you know, the um, the chicken fry packet, that's mm -hmm. a perfect one, the fish fry packet, perfect to go along with the remoulade. In, in uh, the south, the remoulade sauce is pretty much like ketchup, how we have the rest of the rest of the, the world. Ah, uh, well, if only. Uh, my name is Sound South, but I have, don't have a single southern bone in me. So this is all, it's actually really exciting to see all of the different components that are really um, native to Cajun culture and yes. the south. And I mean, you grew up there, so. Well, we, we have, I have family that's all, that's all from down there. So mm -hmm. I've got the influences uh, that, are, that are with, you know, Cajun culture. Pickle sauce or pickle juice? Pickle juice to pickle begin juice. with. Pickle juice. Yep. Oh. <laughs> we lost an ornament. <laughs> Christmas is coming early. Yes, it is. <laughs> and actually, uh, that's a good plug for on the site today. Everything that is available on the site, if you order today, it can ship tomorrow. So it's great for the holidays, whether that's Thanksgiving or Christmas. I actually think these are amazing giftables. So you can take them, put them into your meal right away, or gift them to family members that love to cook as much as Will does. Um, and maybe for family members that don't cook like Savannah, so you can encourage them to get in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, now we're, we did pickle juice. We had a little bit of uh, lemon juice as well. Added some ground cracked pepper. And we're actually gonna do a couple of shakes of. All right, and now this is another great opportunity to show what this looks like. Yeah, and this is just the beginning. So you just added a hot sauce to it, right? Yes, exactly. And then add just a tad more and all, this all is purpose seasoning. All purpose seasoning. Oh, yep. there Boom. we go. All purpose. I love it. Boom. It's in the shot. <laughs> no. I'm just gonna get a picture of your watch there. There we go. <laughs> Okay, and the final thing that uh, separates mine from a lot of other people's is uh, prepared horseradish. Prepared horseradish gives a little bite, a little kick that you're not expecting. And so everything that we're using today, you actually can easily find at the grocery store, yeah, right? Yeah, any, any, um, any aisle that has condiments, like I said, with uh, this version is you know, the South version of ketchup for the most part, so you can find it in the condiment aisles 110% of the time. Does that mean you could like eat this with like french fries or like dipping sauce? Yes, you actually can. Oh, great. It's excellent for it. So, doing, we stir that up just a little more for sure, me. Sure, I can stir. <laughs> that is something I can easily do, hopefully. <laughs> now, while she's uh, working on that, I've got these over here. These are about done. So we're gonna remove these from the heat and then we're gonna add in our uh, chicken livers. That is the, the main component of what dirty rice is. You have regular rice, mm -hmm. you have uh, jambalaya, bayou rice, you name it, and then there's dirty rice. Chicken livers is what gives dirty rice its, its name because so, of the flavors. And so you guys, it sounds like you make dirty rice at 
your Thanksgiving for like stuffing substitute, right? Yeah, uh, whether it's for a, st a stuffing substitute. Uh, I know, like, let's say for this this Christmas, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a turducken. So this is going to be one of the, you know, a the stuffing that we have. What in is there. a turducken? I feel like I should know this. <laughs> so what a turducken is? It is a. Uh, a chicken stuffed inside a duck stuffed inside a turkey. That sounds like complicated. <laughs> it's actually not. It's really? No, no, because the, the easiest way that I tell everybody kind of um, to do it, especially with the classes that I run and so uh -huh. forth, is to get the, the breasts for each one of them. Because the breasts are, are smaller and it actually allows you a chance to be able to work a little differently with them versus Crazy. having to stuff each bird inside the next one. Stuffing birds inside of other birds sounds wrong, but it <laughs> sounds also like it's delicious. <laughs> so. It definitely is. All right, so right now you're adding the liver, correct? Yep. All right, I'm so, going to show again. So we're going to add the livers. These are going to render down. I'm going to swear they're, they're kind of like a, a pasty mm -hmm. texture. And over here to the right of Will, this was what we were just cooking with the trinity and the roux, correct? Exactly. So that's kind of the, tex the texture, consistency, color you're looking for. Yep. So that's got the, the trinity, which is, like I mentioned, the um, mm -hmm. green bell peppers, the uh, celery, and the onions. Plus it's got some diced jalapenos and uh, garlic, of course. And again, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good in here. <laughs> All right, so these are going to take a, a minute. So while we're All doing right, this, so I'm, what are we going to do next? We're going to finish the, uh, the shrimp and the remoulade sauce. So Ooh, back over, over here. here. So the remoulade sauce, as you can see the color on it, oh. it's a little bit more of the, the let's, reddish. Let's show the color. So it's got a, red, a little red hue to it. Now, mm -hmm. the, the more red it is, obviously the spicier it is because you've either added more paprika, more um, cayenne, or even the hot sauce to go with it. So Savannah's version would be like white because I don't <laughs> put any spices in mine other than the, the spice herb we have, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got these. Let's set all these off to the side. And then we'll get started on the shrimp. The shrimp is the easiest one that, that we've got going on today because all we've got to do is season it up, let it sit for just a tad, mm -hmm. and then pop it in the, the steam pot. Takes two to three minutes. You just want it to where it's, you know, it's uh, pink, a little mm -hmm. opaque, but not overdone where it's, it's too chewy. Yeah. So and that's, a, and that's one of those things where, you know, you go to some restaurants or even if you're cooking at home, you tend to, a lot of people tend to overdo it where you're biting on it almost like beef jerky, which is, is the last thing. This is part day. of the reason I don't get in the kitchen because I don't intend for things to be chewy or tough, but I have messed up eggs before. My husband's like, how did you undercook and make chewy eggs? Like that's Savannah. So I think I'm going to take, this can go away, right? Yeah, yep. in, unless, you're, unless you want to add more spice on it. I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I think it's great. A lot of this these items are easy. They're in your kitchen already. Mm -hmm. um, for, ooh, for, <laughs> this made a great popping sound if you didn't hear it. That's how you know you're cooking. <laughs> That's good to know. Savannah doesn't cook, so now I know what it sounds like. <laughs> now you see I'm mashing some of these up as well. Gosh. Trying to get them to where they'll, they'll break down a little right, quicker. Again, I'm going to show a close up so we can see what the color is looking like now. Whoop, why is there we go? So me, me personally, I like them to where, I like the livers to where they're a little bit more on the, the darker side because you get a little bit of the crisp to go with them. Mm -hmm. Some people like them to where they're a little bit more on the, uh, the mashier side, if, if that's even a word. So it's really just whatever your preference is yes. in terms of the texture. But you just got to make sure that you have livers in there no matter what. Okay, livers are important to the dirty rice. My mother informed me of this before we did the segment. I'm like, I don't know what dirty rice is, but she did. <laughs> <laughs> See, we'll have to have your, uh, your mom on here as a guest next time. Yes, we will. So with the, uh, what I was mentioning with the shrimp, because I'm going to let these drop the heat just a tad. Mm -hmm. What I was mentioning with the shrimp is, remember I was mentioning the, the different flavor profiles. You yep. want to have them to where they're, they're layered. So we used the all-purpose spice rub for the remoulade sauce, which mm -hmm. we're finished with. And now we're actually going to be using the um, mesquite barbecue rub. Mesquite barbecue. So you get that little bit of a, a barbecue cool. kick to it. You know, mm -hmm. something that it's, it's outside of the, the normal shrimp cocktail, you know, that everybody has mm -hmm. shrimp cocktail, cocktail sauce. This is something that'll knock their socks off too. Yeah. Now with this also, for as I mentioned, for the dipping sauce with the remoulade, mm -hmm. you can use the fish fry to actually fry your shrimp. So that way you have a little bit more crunch to go with it as well. Yeah, what I love about all of these spices too, is you could really just put them in your pantry and have them available for any day of the week. So you don't have to do special Thanksgiving cooking. It just in general, if you want to add an extra spice to your meal, exactly. this is a great way to do that. Okay, so I'm going to have you season these up. Oh, uh oh, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay, so what we'll do, you want to pour 
generous amount on. All right, I'm gonna show again. So, see, really, every time I pull out this camera, it's more of a way for me not to cook than to. So, okay, that's the generous proportion you're talking about. Yes. Okay. And so, pretty much mix them up, you know, just by hand. And then what size were these shrimp, just for people watching? These were a 1620 uh, count. 1620 okay. count or um, 2125 count are usually the best ones because you still get the size on them mm -hmm. without them being too small. Too small, you, you might as well just have a, a shrimp Louis salad. Oh, interesting. So. Yeah. And I always, in the Pacific Northwest, if you guys ever get up here, go to the market, grab some shrimp. There are amazing shrimp up here. And they're huge. These are actually really good sampling, but I've seen bigger than that, believe it or not. Hey, those are, those are also good ones, too. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a little bit of crust on them. We're going to kill the heat for a minute, mm -hmm. pull these out. Now, what we're going to do, we'll let them just sit for a quick sec, and then we're going to mince them up. So okay. it's going to be a quick mince, just chop all the way through. And then we're going to add the Trinity back in mm -hmm. with a little bit of our uh, butter chicken broth so that we bring it up to a bowl, add the meat, and then uh, fold everything in and hopefully we should be good. And it's all been in the one pot or the one pan the entire time. So this is, I imagine, the best way to do it so you get to continue with all the flavor that you're building exactly. in the pan. Okay. And that's one of the, the things when it comes to, you know, Cajun culture and mm -hmm. cooking. You want to make sure that you're able to do everything in one pot because, you know, back in the, the old days, not everybody had access to multiple you know, cooking equipment. I think even today, I, I know I, my parents at least, they have their favorite pan. Like I always go to one if I do get in the kitchen. So I think it's great that you have just everything in the one. Yeah, this uh, jambalaya, gumbo, etouffee, they're all one pot meals. So it makes our lives uh, that much easier. Very cool. To where it's also less cleanup, minus, you know, the, the, the bowls for prep and everything, but yep. that comes later. All right, you're not making me cut this up, are you? No. <laughs> okay, good. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have you keep mixing. Okay, you know. I can do that. Okay, now we're going to turn the heat back up. We're going to put this on a medium. Okay. Once uh, we get the butter melted down, what we're going to do is add in the, uh, the trinity again, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. and along with the meats, and then everything's going to start mixing up because we've got this, as you can see, it's not just regular vegetables. The roux is already in there. Yep. So once we add in the liquid, it'll mm -hmm. thicken up, which is, you know, what we're looking for. Great. So again, for those of you who are just joining us, we are featuring a Cajun Life on the site today. It's actually a Facebook Live exclusive. So make sure to click the link in the post. Everything that we are cooking with today, all of the product on the table is in this event. And we have some great Zool exclusive bundles at $8.99. So it's a great price point and it's a great savings. I also think it's we're highlighting a lot of amazing items here that you could easily take with you to Thanksgiving dinner. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, again, it gets everybody out of the, the usual rut of turkey, sweet potatoes, um, <laughs> mac and cheese. You know, I mean, e even mac and cheese, we, we have one where I use the, you know, Cajun Life, of mm. course, and we step it up to what we've got. It's, it's a loaded mac and cheese. So with andouille sausage, blackened chicken, that you know, sounds really good, bacon though. and shrimp. Yeah. It's a meal in itself. <laughs> So if that sounds good, you should go back. I think we actually did mac and cheese on the last Cajun Life segment. So if you guys didn't see that one, you should go back a few weeks and watch that segment. We It was super successful. We actually sold out of everything. So make sure to purchase if you want to get these items. We have limited quantities, and they're going to go fast. And again, as a reminder, if you love this brand or want to learn when it comes back on the site, maybe you bought in the last event and you loved those items, favorite the brand on the site. There's actually a little heart and we'll notify you anytime something comes about. So if we do sell out of something, we wanna make sure you're the first ones to know about it. Okay, so I added in the, um, the chicken broth. All so right. this way, we're gonna be able to deglaze it, but as you see, it's coming thicker, which is exactly what you're looking for. When you're doing a, a gumbo along with jump, you know, mm -hmm. um, dirty rice and etouffee, you want the thickness, because it's not supposed to be a soup. You want it more to where it's almost like a, a stew. And like this, a, mm -hmm. oh, like a gravy or something, like almost? And exactly, and that's, and that's actually how you start off with the gravy, is normally added with the, the pan bits, which is mm -hmm. what I'm, you can see I'm scraping here. Yes. The pan bits and bringing up your, uh, your basic roux. Okay, and a tad more. And what is this that you're adding right here? This is chicken broth. Oh, okay. You use chicken broth or chicken stock. Uh, as you notice, we haven't added any any salt in there because when we have andouille sausage, which mm -hmm. has salt uh, salt content, plus there's a little bit of salt just in the uh, the, the spice rubs. And they're like low sodium too. Exactly. So if I actually think that's great if you guys are on a low sodium diet. This is a good alternative. And to Will's point, you don't need salt. You can use the natural ingredients and the Cajun spice rubs to really give that flavorful taste to your food. Yes, you can. Okay, now we want to make sure you get all the the juices that we got and all the sauce right from the initial 
meats, because that adds obviously more flavor to it as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to again show another close up. It's looking really good, Will. <laughs> And we obviously haven't even added the rice. Like that, this is all to go into the rice. Exactly. And we also still have to chop up the livers and add those in because that's Which what gives it that kick. Are over here in case you missed us making those earlier. Yep. So now uh, again, we we added in with the meats initially. Mm -hmm. We added in our blackening spice, and for the um, the veggies, we actually added in our chicken rub. So again, you're getting a couple different flavors that go with it. Yep. And in our little bowl here, there's mm -hmm. some uh, thyme, oregano. Uh, a little bit of white pepper and some red pepper flakes as well. And one of the things I actually forgot to mention is we smartly put the items that are in each dish together as bundles on the site. So if you really want to make one of these recipes, you should go grab them and they're together available for purchase as a bundle on Zuleli. So click the link in the post. <laughs> okay. Now, and so now you're just doing like that quick mince you talked about. Exactly. Because what you don't want to do, you're not trying to bite into an entire piece of liver because mm -hmm. it's not a dirty liver and rice, it's dirty <laughs> rice. That sounds like a whole other meal, dirty liver and rice. <laughs> oh, it smells really good. And it's right now it's just bubbling on the stove top, yep. but I can smell everything that we've put in here today, all of the sausage, all of the spice rubs really creating, I mean, I, your house would smell amazing if you're making this at home. <laughs> every, every year. I mean, we have, we have our friends that, that come over, friends, family, and they, uh, they smell it from up the street, wherever they're, they're happen to park. That's so. great. Well, and it's funny because I don't make this at my Thanksgiving dinner, but obvious, but it kind of smells like holidays to me. Like it does really bring back those like sensory qualities. Yes, it does. If you want to do me a favor, give that a quick stir. Sure. Oh, it's really thick. Yep, and now if it's, sometimes if it's too thick, because we do want the, um, once we add the rice in, which is gonna be here in a sec, mm -hmm. we do want the rice to absorb the liquid as well. Okay, so I don't think it's like too thick, right? But no. it's, it's a nice thick. It's actually thick, perfect. Yeah, it's a good thick quality. Okay, now to add in the livers. And these take a couple, couple minutes just to be able to render down like I was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is actually one of my. Uh, Let's do another close-up. One of my daughter's favorite dishes. Oh, that's fun. Well, and so before we started, Will was saying that he, as the chef, has been cooking. Your wife is a lucky lady. She's only cooked twice She's in cooked seven twice. years. Exactly. <laughs> and it sounds like your daughter's lucky too, because she gets to eat all of the fruits of your labor. <laughs> oh, oh, well, she in, in the kitchen. Uh, both of those two are actually my sous chefs. Oh, that's great. Yeah, when we're at home, that they, they don't get out of that. That's awesome. So you at least have help at home, exactly. even if they're not actually cooking the meal. <laughs> okay, so now, got this. We're gonna add in just a little bit more of the broth. And so you said the, you're adding the liquid, so that way there's something for the rice to absorb. Exactly, because you don't you don't just want plain rice. You don't, you want to be able to have it to where it's got some of the liquid to absorb in it. I mean, mm -hmm. with uh, gumbo, or excuse me, jambalaya, it's the same way. Jambalaya literally means ham and rice, so you want to make sure that the rice is cooked with it. And that's where we already have uh, some pre-made pre-cooked rice to begin with. Now with the flavors again, I add in just a little bit of chicken bouillon because it gives it a little bit of a uh, different flavor than, than anything else that we already have in Interesting. there. Interesting. And so TV magic, we obviously already made the rice, but that's the first component <laughs> to dirty rice is you want to make the rice in advance. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, pre-made rice is, is fine with this dish because the meats get made and then the rice gets added in anyways. Mm. Okay, so now what we're gonna do one thing too, you, uh, you may hear a lot of people that uh, say stir in rice. You never want to stir in rice. You always want to fold it in. Because oh. when you fold, when you fold. Yeah, I want to show what that looks like. Because again, Savannah, learning a lot of great things today. Because <laughs> when you fold in, you're not breaking the grains. Oh, a lot okay. of people will see them just stirred in yeah. and whatnot. Well, then you've got broken rice grains all over. So it's funny, obviously you know in theory what fold in rice means, but it's so different to see a professional chef do it <laughs> than just someone at home. And it's looking really amazing. And the, there's a lot of great color in there, too, because of the trinity that you mentioned. Yes. And like I said, some people, um, they, they, they love the, whether it's the red bell peppers. Mm -hmm. um, some people say that the green doesn't really add that much uh, flavor to it. I beg to differ, but I'm also not, you know, usually a fan of bell peppers anyway. So oh. <laughs> that makes it actually perfect for me. Yeah. Okay. So 
This is almost done. Mm -hmm. And we still have our shrimp that we get to finish yep. off as well. So what we're going to do with this. I get, I'm so excited I get to taste this. This is the real reason I agreed to do this segment is I get to taste all the food that we're making. <laughs> so let's flatten it out. Key to flattening, same thing with uh, when you're uh, dicing up, chopping mm -hmm. up vegetables, anything. Keep it flat, everything cooks evenly. If you cut same the same size, yep. you know, uh, vegetables, whether it's the green bell peppers, the celery, the onions, cut everything the same, they all cook the same. So consistency Ex obviously helps with the execution. Yes, it does. Yep. We're just going to tad more because this is going to soak in. Does that also help it like bind all together, basically? Yes, it does. Okay. So if you see, now see how it's a little bit thicker than what it was? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. You don't want a, a dirty rice where it's too flaky. You want to have it to where it's almost pasted together, mm. but not quite. Okay. And pop this down to low. So we'll just let that simmer down. And again, you're flattening it out. Yep. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just let the, uh, pretty much all the liquid you know, we'll soak in. Exactly. Yep. Evaporate out and whatnot. Cool. Let that sit. Now we're back over to our All right. our shrimp. So the shrimp is already done. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest part. <laughs> you pop it in. Even I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> pop it in. Move them around to their again, just like we do with the dirty rice. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that they're even. And for those who are just tuning in, we earlier put the mesquite barbecue rub on the shrimp, so we have pre-prepped them. Um, but this one seems like it's really simple because you're just steaming it right now. Exactly. And again, it takes two, two to three minutes. Uh, steaming with a basket is, is perfect because it, it, you don't have to worry about burning it mm. as, versus you have it on the stove or if you have it in the oven, which some people, you know, do, whether it's barbecue shrimp and, yeah. and so forth. So, and when you're looking at them, again, you want to make sure that they're opaque, pretty much pink, pink through, so you make sure that they're cooked yes. completely. <laughs> no, we're not that, trying to get people sick on holidays. That seems like a no-brainer, but yes, you want to cook the protein. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so now here's what we'll do. All right. Let's plate up the remoulade sauce. We'll move these out the way just a second. All time. right. Okay. We, can we move them off off? Yeah, we can move okay, them perfect. off. That will actually work. Perfect. Making room. And this as well, right? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, now. Are you still needing more of the hot ha -ha, sauce? Do you want it? Uh, <laughs> I think I'll be brave for you at home. We'll go a little bit spicier. <laughs> Toss a couple dashes in. Ah, a dash? For Savannah, it's like, I'm scared. Let's do, you actually have to turn the bottle over. I'm scared. I One, don't. two, three. Okay. There you go. Okay. We'll go four. Okay. We'll go four dashes. That'll work. <laughs> okay. Now, plating is, plating is big. Uh, when it comes to a lot of southern foods, you have it towards either in a bowl or it's family style and mm -hmm. whatnot to where it, you don't get the same quote unquote presentation. So yep. we're going to try and work on a couple different ways how to do this, whether it's, uh, we'll mix this up again. All right. Thank you. Oh, yes. Well, I hello. <laughs> Unless you want to have the first bite be in hot sauce. I really don't. <laughs> and again, I'm going to show a close up of what this color is looking like, because to your point from earlier, you want it to be kind of on the rudder side. Yes. Um, and just that's really the spices that we put in the mesquite barbecue rub, but it's also the hot sauce that you add The hot well. sauce, the cayenne pepper, and then mm -hmm. the paprika. Okay, great. And so you're gonna plate with the remoulade sauce right now? Yeah, so what, what I like to do a lot of times is uh, the first thing you eat with, you know, is your, is your eyes. Your eyes, yeah. Unless it's, unless it's fajitas, the first thing you eat with is ears. <laughs> you know, because you hear those things coming from a mile away. That's so true. With this too, and, and also with our nose. So we're gonna take a scoop here. Okay, I'm gonna show gonna, again. So just do it kind of like a little. So pretty. And it looks like really easy. Anyone can do this, including me. <laughs> okay, so these. Well, Are they already done? No, not yet. Okay. I'm like, I was about to be super impressed. No, no. <laughs> not yet, almost though. So I'm gonna turn the heat up just a tad more. Ooh, it smells good in here. <laughs> I'm getting really excited, like I'm getting hungry, and it's <laughs> just eating breakfast, but I'm already <laughs> hungry for this. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do, and, and when it comes to uh, the plating, mm -hmm. we're actually gonna put the shrimp, and we're gonna use the uh, the spice rubs to go with it, okay. along with a little bit of, of parsley garnish to where when you know you're presenting, especially at a you know a dinner table. Let's say you're you know with your husband, and it's just you two for the night, yeah. and you guys are like, hey, I'm gonna make this because you know how to now, so. <laughs> You know, it's, I, it's a cake recipe. I'm not telling my husband that I learned how to cook today because he will make me put this in to, to, for dinner tonight. I'm like, and that's no. a good thing. <laughs> not for me. Okay. Oh, that's great. So what we're going to do is once the shrimp is, is finished, we'll plate them along the outside because 
just like with the salad, you don't want to douse, you know, your your greens with mm -hmm. dressing because that's all you're going to taste is dressing. Yeah. So you want to leave it to where people have the opportunity to be able to, you know, dip in how they want. And because it is a little spicy, you definitely want people to be able to like temper and don't exactly. put it in it. Okay. Yeah, and and that's one of that's one of those things where, you know, if it's not. Um, if it, if it is over the top and the taste buds are killed, then the entire dish is ruined, which is yeah. the last thing that you want to do. I think that's honestly why I don't like spicy foods. So I love that the Cajun spices that we have today, a Cajun life in general, just because it's Cajun doesn't mean it's spicy. It's all about the complex favorite flavor profiles, which Will taught me. So, <laughs> and again, everything today on the site, make sure to click the link in the post if you want to go ahead and make these. We will be posting the recipes. So you definitely want to get these going. And everything that you've ordered today can ship tomorrow. So it will be there in time for the holidays, which I think is another value proposition that Zulily is giving you guys today. Yeah, it's spectacular. Okay, yeah. let's go back over to our rice here. So the rice is one of those that should be almost done. Oop. Nah, you're good. Actually, I just realized I didn't bring, just in case I need it, I didn't bring this with me. There we go. And actually, I think I will show because this has been sitting for a little bit and so now yep. it's like this great consistency, very thick, all um, kind of bonded together like you were saying. You know, a lot of people think when, when you're, when you got to make a good dish, a good meal, that it mm -hmm. is time consuming, that it's expensive, or, or even that it's, um, that it's hard. Yeah. Which, you know, dirty rice is one of the easiest things that you could possibly do. The, the thing that takes up the most time, as far as just from my uh, experience, it's is the prep the work. Rice? No, yeah. it's the oh, prep the pre work. Oh, really? Yeah, the prep work, because you got to dice up, you got to slice, you got to make mm -hmm. sure you got your right, you know, amounts and totals where the cooking time is actually less. So if you're like Will, put your family to work as a sous, sous chef and get them all cutting in advance so that way you don't have to do the hard work. And that's the key. There you go. <laughs> Okay. And I actually love this for Thanksgiving too, because one of the things, one of the reasons I do cook on Thanksgiving is because it's all hands on deck, and we're all contributing towards like one dish. So this is a, also, I think, a good bonding uh, dish for families as well. Yes, it is actually. I mean, it gives you guys a chance to to one. You have one person on one station, another person on another station. You get it to where uh, the spice levels you guys got to work as a unit because you're making one dish. Yeah. You're not making 15 different, you know, dirty nope. rices. You're making one, so everybody's got to be. They've, they've got it all coordinate and agree, yep. which and, is hard. And the Trinity has to all be the same size to cook at the same temperature, so. Oh, I love it. Yeah, this is, we're almost done, maybe about another three, five minutes away. Because mm -hmm. as you can see, you see still just a little bit of liquid left, which is fine. Now you can you can change up with your uh, with the, even the broth and the stock. Like I mentioned, one of them is a little bit higher in salt content, which is yes. the broth, versus the stock, which is mm -hmm. pretty much all the impurities are, are cleaned up. Yep. You can use a chicken stock, a veggie, veggie one as well. Uh, I personally wouldn't go beef because we got a, already ground beef in here, yeah. and too much beef will throw the entire profile out the window. Interesting. So again, if you guys are just joining us, what we started off saying is Savannah is a cooking novice and Will is a master chef, but I think. Watching you today, I feel like I could do these easily at home. Believe I, it or not, I actually think I could do these. Like I said, I was going to turn you into from a novice to a chef today. That's not happening, but <laughs> I, at least I'm one level higher than I was when I entered the kitchen this morning. <laughs> there you go, and that's, and that's all that matters. As long as you're, you're better than you were in the kitchen the day before, Hey, but again, win. what's really great is, um, you know, all of the rubs and the mixes, I think, are great to add on to things if you are more of an experienced chef. But if you're not, we have these great hush puppy foods that are out yep. there. So. so as we wrap up today, we definitely want to finish the shrimp. Yes. Okay. And as you can see. Oh, it's so pretty. Let me show. There's a couple that are that still need to be completed. Oh, fully all done. the steam is getting in the camera. <laughs> hey, that's, that's how it's supposed to yep. be. So as you can see, some of them are still not done, but some are. So let's give this 30 oh, there we go. seconds Sorry. more. Whoop. So pretty. There we go. Show it again. That's great. So we'll give this 30 seconds more. While we're doing that, let's finish up the uh, dirty rice. Okay. Plate this. Perfect. Okay. Cut the heat. <laughs> Cast iron skillets are the best. Yeah. They, they keep that heat going all the way through. Oh, that's fun. It's, and it's, again, that thicker texture. Yes. It's almost like you're just folding it out like it's a piece of pie, but it's not. <laughs> Okay, now. Obviously not. <laughs> Grab a napkin. This is where the chef is coming out. Will is rubbing down to make sure it's pretty. I would just be like, it's in, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Presentation is everything. Okay, now we garnish with some green onions all the way throughout. That gives it a little bit more crunch, mm -hmm. and then we'll put a couple sprigs of parsley. And this makes it really colorful and very festive and yes. pretty. You know, one thing that you can also do, uh, if you want to add in even more color, you mm -hmm. can actually put uh, get some Fresno chilies, which are red ones, oh. and that way you got a, a different you know, color contrast as well. Interesting. So there's our dirty rice. Love We're it. Finished with this one. And I think we can see it well, but again, I want to show a close up for those. At home. Oh no, you know, look at you, Will. You did the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're back over finishing up our shrimp. Okay. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna pull out the ones that are completed already. Mm -hmm. Now you can see how they plumped up too. Oh, they're so pretty. It's funny saying that about shrimp, but with the rub on it, it really is beautiful. Like, I, I want to eat them. You said we eat with our eyes first. Exactly. So what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to do three. Um, plating is, is one of those where you don't want to put too much on the plate, mm -hmm. but also you don't want to have too, too few things. Yes. Okay. So how the our sauce is going right there, mm -hmm. we're going to do the exact same thing going backwards, though. I feel like if you do this at home, you are going to be impressing your family for very little effort, by the way. It was not difficult to put this dish together at all. We no. spent most of our time on their dirty rice. Exactly. And then let me grab a little bit more of our parsley here. It's beautiful. And again, this is where the chef and Will is coming out. Savannah would just be like, it's on the plate, it's done. Yes. <laughs> all right, and then we are gonna show a close up one more time of how beautiful this is. And then let's finish this off with, we'll do a little bit of mesquite rub. Oh, great. And this was the rub that you put on the shrimp to start exactly. with. Exactly. So you have some just in the center, so that way when you dip in the sauce, so pretty. you can dip some on the shrimp as well. I love this. There we go. All right, thank you so much, Will. All right, well, thank you guys, the Lily fans. We are done. I want to eat it, but I think we're, actually, do we have? No, we'll eat it after. You just maybe have to be jealous that I get to eat this amazing dinner. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Again, don't forget to click the link on this post. We have limited assortment and quantities of a Cajun Life available. It's a Zulily Facebook Live exclusive, and it will be going fast. If you haven't already, Heart the brand on the site. We're bringing it back because this has been fun. I actually want to do this all over again. I'm, I'm down with it too. All right. Well, thank you guys again so much. We'll see you next time.